What are you doing? Oh, I'm just busy earning 71,000% interest on my money. It's gone down a bit actually, it was 85,000 last night. Hey Financial Warriors, welcome to the show. And in this video, I want to share with you a very interesting financial product that you may be interested in tossing a little bit of money on. I say a little bit of money because this isn't for the faint hearted. A lot could go wrong with this, all right? But on the other hand, you could stand to make an insane amount of money, but I don't know though. Anyway, we are of course talking about DAOs. Now, this isn't the DAO from ancient China. It's DAO and it stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. These are blockchain-based organizations that create a smart contract and then hand over control of the programming to people who have bought into the DAO through purchasing the token that is associated with it. So if you've bought into it, you have voting rights and the people who created it no longer control it. So this gets rid of the so-called principal agent dilemma where there is no one agent who worked on behalf of the group because decisions for that group can only be made by a vote of the entire group itself. But this doesn't always go smoothly. When the first DAO was created back in 2016 and it was simply called the DAO, at that time, it had $150 million worth of Ethereum invested in it, which was 14% of all Ethereum in existence at the time. In May 2016, a paper was written exposing vulnerabilities in the DAO's programming. On June 14th, fixes were proposed and were awaiting a vote by members. On June 17th, before these fixes could be implemented, hackers took advantage of these vulnerabilities and stole 3.6 million Ether valued at $50 million at the time. And in case you're curious, today's value for that much Ethereum would be $14 billion. The situation got so serious that even Ethereum's founder, Vitalik Buterin, got involved in proposing a solution. And eventually, a hard fork was carried out on the entire Ethereum network, which rolled back time to before the DAO was hacked and the stolen ether could be recovered by the original wallets. Those that opposed the hard fork supported an earlier version of Ethereum called Ethereum Classic, and that still exists today. If you have Coinbase, you may have even traded it. And speaking of Coinbase, if you want $10 in free Bitcoin for signing up, use my link below. So hopefully I've scared you enough to be cautious, but not too much that you don't want to get involved at all. And that was the first DAO in existence anyway. A lot has happened since then. Fast forward to 2021 and one of the DAOs that is getting talked about a lot right now is Time Wonderland. I love how sketchy this landing page looks. Now this DAO offers investors an insane interest rate for holding the Time token. Right now it is at 68,000%. But it's important to not take that number at face value because you are getting that by staking your Time tokens which you get by first buying Avalanche, which you can do on Coinbase and then sending that to Metamask Wallet and then buying time tokens through Trader Joe and then you stake them on the Wonderland site. Anyway, you stake them on Wonderland's site where the stake time are referred to as memo or memories. The value of time and thus memo can go up and down, so it's kind of a battle between interest rate and the value of the token, which determines how much you make or lose. Now, time is currently valued at around $4,000, just fluctuating above and below. You can track its price on Coinbase. So there's sort of a tug of war going on between interest rate and the value of the token. And if the value of the token falls, that entire 68,000% interest rate would just be wiped out, right? Or would it? You see, if you hold long enough, the price of the token starts to matter less and less. Let's have a look at the calculator on the Wonderland site. Right now, I have a value of $225 in my account. Staking it for 30 days at 68,000% APY will grow the account to $385. If I hold it for a year, I will end up with $154,000, assuming the price of the token stays around $4,000. But let's say it drops and falls to $500. Well, my account will still be worth $17,000, and that was all from a $200 investment. But time has another trick up its sleeve. You see, it's backed by a basket of other cryptocurrencies that people have used to buy time, and these are stored in the treasury. You can see the treasury balance here is $890 million, and you can see on the website right now that each token is backed by 1,585 US dollars worth of crypto assets from that treasury. Why that is significant is that if the price of time was ever to drop down as far as that backing price, the algorithm would automatically burn tokens bringing the price back up. So basically, they control the floor. They control the minimum price of time according to how much assets are in the treasury. 
And if it really did go down that low, I would only make $54,000 from my $200 investment after one year. What a tragedy, guys. But obviously the backing price can go down if the supply of tokens increases, but the amount of money in the treasury doesn't go up. However, it can only go as low as $1 because it is backed by one MIM per time and MIM stands for magic internet money. Now, if it really did go that low, okay, yeah, I would end up with just $34 from my $200 investment after one year. But that is the most extreme scenario I could think of. So it's kind of a balance between all of these things that you see on the dashboard. The time price, the treasury, the backing price, the APY. The APY can also change, by the way. Now, I don't have time, pun intended, to go through every single thing in this video. It's not supposed to be a how-to video, it's more of an introduction. But I will put the FAQ from their website in the links below and I'll also put some other useful videos down there uh, probably in the pinned comment that you can watch uh, to get more of a full explanation. So if you were to put say $20,000 into time and stake it you would be taking a very big risk but the potential reward would be insane too. After a year if all goes well you could end up with $14 million. But if you were to put say $200 into it the risk is really minimal but you'd still get quite a nice reward if all goes well. You could have $154,000 after a year if all the variables stay roughly the same, which that's a really great reward, but you only stand to lose $200 if it all goes wrong. And let's face it, $200 for someone who's into investing really isn't that much at all. Now, the whole idea of DAOs is really something that's very new. It's not something that everyone is talking about yet, like NFTs that exploded into popularity last year. Now you know some of the basic principles of DAOs, you can start to look into other ones too. This is another one I've put money into on the Solana blockchain, Invictus. Here's the dashboard page, and I'm sure it looks familiar with the price, the treasury, the backing price, etc. Now check out this one, Nemesis DAO on the Binance blockchain with 38 million percent APY. But then you can take a look at how quickly the price of the token is falling and take that into account too. I guess what I'm saying here is that when something looks too good to be true, that's normally because it is, all right? Even the founder of Time Wonderland, Daniel Sesta, said in an interview, jokingly, that it was a Ponzi scheme. Now, Ponzi schemes are where you take money from those that come later and pay it out to the earlier investors. Hey, hey, hey. Now the difference is that this only becomes a Ponzi scheme if people panic and sell. Time Wonderland and other DAOs are all based on game theory, where staking is seen as the most advantageous option, and if everyone just stakes, that grows the bag for everyone. I.e., if people make sudden large withdrawals, it hurts them as well. Now like we said, this technology is very new, and many DAOs haven't even achieved the objective that is the reason for their existence. Time One Lad, for example, they're supposed to be coming out with an RPG eventually to give functionality to the time token. But in the meantime, it is an exciting thing to get involved with investing small amounts of money in, kind of like the early days of Bitcoin where no one knew really where the technology was going. On the other hand, the SEC could turn around and suddenly say, DAOs are illegal, and we're all screwed. So my opinion is don't put all of your life savings into DAOs. Save that for Shiba Inu. No, I'm joking. Just do what your financial advisor says. Only 5% of your net worth in crypto. No, that's a joke too. But it is fun to put a few hundred dollars here and there into different DAOs and who knows, if all goes well after one year of investing, you could end up with a few hundred thousand or even over a million dollars in your account. Of course, if you are someone who researches more and really gets into these things, then you may be able to tolerate greater exposure. So there you go, guys. There's my introduction to DAOs and specifically Time Wonderland. I'm doing this as, you know, part of researching more kind of exotic investments as part of my plan to become a millionaire by the end of 2022, specifically so that I can make Millionaire Reacts videos. Like, that's the only reason I'm doing it. Not to make a better life for my kids, but Millionaire Reacts, that's what I wanna do. So anyway, I'm gonna start getting into all sorts of different money-making schemes and documenting them on YouTube. I might even start trading NFTs again. I did a little bit of that earlier this year. It's pretty fun. Um, anyway, if you have any ideas or suggestions of what I should do and make a video about, do leave it in the comments below. I will, of course, let you know how I get on with Time Wonderland and Invictus Dow and any others that I invest in later on in 2022. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.